Welcome to IHAF Indonesia 2020 Goes Online. This is Institution Webinar Series. My name is Christy Johanna. I'm going to be moderating this webinar. This webinar is going to be presented by the University of Warwick. Please stay tuned until the end of the webinar because we will hold a Q&A session. If you have any questions about the presentation or anything related to the country's higher education, you can submit your questions in YouTube comment section anytime throughout the presentation. And now, please welcome Mr. Uh, Imran from the University of Warwick. Mr. Imran, the time is yours. Okay, thank you very much. Hello and good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to the webinar session by the University of Warwick. My name is Imran Hashim and I'm the War uh, Warwick Liaison Manager for Southeast Asia. So what does that mean? It means that I am here to help you uh, uh, get to know more about the University of Warwick. If you're interested to uh, find out, you know, uh, uh, courses that might be relevant to you, uh, please come to me. And also once you have decided to apply, I'm also here to help uh, all the Indonesian students um, in the process. All right. So now I'm going to start sharing my screen and start the presentation. All right, here we go. Okay. Right. Okay. So today I'm going to be talking to you about why, you know, you should be considering Warwick for your further education. Um, that is the uh, uh, topic for today. Uh, now, uh, before I start on the reasons why, um, I think it, it, would, it would be good for me to introduce to you uh, the university a little bit. Uh, now, if you're not sure, the University of Warwick is located in the UK. Uh, we are actually only one hour away from London by train and 20 minutes away from Birmingham by train. So London is obviously the capital city uh, and Birmingham is the UK's second largest city. And so uh, actually the University of Warwick, we are located in the city of Coventry, which is so close to the two, two of the biggest uh, UK cities. Um, and so for those who uh, want to be uh, near the action, uh, near a big city, that's not a problem. Uh, in one hour, one and a half hours, if you consider the bus ride from campus, in one and a half hours, you can be in London. In about 30, 35 minutes, you can be in Birmingham, right? Now, the University of Warwick, we have about 26,000 students um, and a third of them are international students. And we have uh, four different faculties and um, I'm going to tell you more about these later. Now, the, don't worry, I see you're looking at this black and white photo and you're thinking, oh no, what kind of a place is this? Don't worry, this is Warwick in 1965, uh, where um, uh, that was the year that we started. So unlike some of the other UK universities, we are much younger, but within a short period of time, we have uh, developed ourselves continuously, invested in excellence, and this is what you get today in 2020. Um, if you can see the buildings, the brown color buildings at the bottom half of your screen, those are some of the accommodations that we have on campus. And these uh, white color buildings in the background, these uh, you know massive numbers of white buildings, uh, they are uh, the buildings on central campus. And that includes, of course, the library, uh, the Warwick uh, Art Center, which is the biggest art center outside of London, um, and then all the different faculty buildings. As you can see, everything is is actually uh, within walking distance. So you don't need a bus uh, to like, you know, uh, go around campus. Uh, walking is fine. Uh, everything is near enough. Uh, and although it's, a, uh, you know, a, it's, it's not such a huge campus, you'll be, you, you'll be able to find all sorts of amenities uh, on campus itself. Like I said, of course, all the, you know, faculty buildings and library, but also, uh, there's uh, a new sports hall which has been uh, recently uh, refurbished and looks uh, and is spanking new with lots of facilities. Uh, you have 
also bars and cafes, restaurants on campus. Uh, you have a musola right in the middle of campus beside the art center uh, for the Muslim students to pray uh, to pray in. Um, and so uh, lots of different uh, uh, facilities, even a bank and a supermarket in the middle of campus, right? It's a safe environment with a real sense of community. And I'm going to tell you more about that later. Now, of course, uh, you know, a lot of students would uh, be interested to know what is the uh, reputation of the University of Warwick. Now, we are a top 10 UK university. So even though we're a young university, within a short period of time, we were able to climb up the rankings ladder and we are now a top 10 UK university with many subjects actually in the top five, uh, including subjects like business, economics, computer science, politics and life sciences. Now, in the world, we are ranked number 62 uh, in the QS World University Rankings and number 77 in the Times Higher Education University Rankings. So a very highly respected university indeed. Um, I'm still going to talk a little bit more about campus and what we have on campus. So, uh, you know, uh, uh, within our campus grounds, you'll be able to find accommodation. Um, uh, this is Roots, one of the oldest uh, accommodations on campus, uh, and therefore it's also one of the cheapest. Uh, then there's Jack Martin and Arthur Vick, and these are the two... Um, uh, residences that you saw from the drone footage just now. Uh, this is uh, the view from when you're, you know, on the ground. Um, Sherbin is one of our newest halls of residence, and Bluebell is uh, the most expensive. And the reason why is because the rooms are the largest. They have the largest rooms on campus, and also uh, Bluebell um, has a, a ensuite. Uh, rooms whereby uh, you know the bathroom uh, is 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 part. I mean, uh, is included in your room. So that means you don't have to share bathrooms with anyone. So Bluebell is definitely, uh, although it's uh, the most expensive, it's also very popular. Uh, we have other uh, dorms with uh, ensuite bathrooms as well. Just for your information, for example, Sherburn also has ensuite bathrooms, and in fact, more and more uh, dorms uh, will have that. Now I'm going to show a video of the activities you can find on campus. Right, so as you can see just now uh, in the video, uh, Warwick is a great place for you to lead an active lifestyle. But apart from all the different sports that are available on campus, uh, we also have a lot of student societies and associations. For example, the Warwick Indonesian Society, uh, they are quite active as well in organizing activities for Indonesian students. Um, um, you know, and apart from the Indonesian society, there are so many different um, like the activities like, you know, music, uh, theater, drama. So lot, uh, we have, in fact, more than 300 uh, clubs, sports, 
and associations uh, for you to join in. One of the biggest numbers in the UK. So definitely when you're on campus, you won't be bored. Now, for those of you who don't want to live on campus, just, you know, I want to assure you that uh, those who don't want to live on campus can live off campus. Uh, and so we have over 400 properties in Coventry, Leamington Spa and Kenilworth managed by the Warwick Accommodation team. Now, um, so like I said, Warwick is um, located in the city of Coventry. And so Coventry City Centre is quite a popular place for students to live in, those who don't want to live on campus, but Leamington Spa as well. And for Coventry, um, just to let you know, it's the 10th biggest city in England, uh, ranked in the top 50 best student cities in 2019, with excellent transport links. For example, I already told you, one hour only to get to London, uh, 20 minutes to get to Birmingham, so excellent transport links. And in 2021, um, the uh, city of Coventry will be the UK city of culture. And so there'll be, uh, there have already uh, uh, been a lot of uh, activities, cultural activities planned. Of course, with the pandemic, uh, quite a lot of these activities are going to go online. But once things uh, get back to normal, we hope that, um, the activities uh, will resume again. Apart from Coventry, Leamington Spa is also very popular. Uh, Leamington Spa is a bit more uh, a further away from, uh, from our Warwick campus. So for example, for, from Coventry City Centre is about 10 to 15 minutes bus ride. But if you go to Lang live in Leamington Spa, then it's about 30 minutes uh, bus ride. And it's a student friendly town uh, with excellent transport links to campus as well. Now, um, I've talked to you about the facilities, I've talked to you about, you know, campus, all the different things that are available on campus, the, the infrastructure, but actually what makes Warwick really special in, in my mind, in my point of view, is that um, Warwick has a very vibrant and wonderful community. Because remember, you're not just choosing a university, you're choosing your home for the next, uh, for, for one year if you're doing a master's degree or more years than that if you're doing undergraduate degree or PhD. Now, at Warwick, uh, there really is a sense of community uh, and we have students from so many different nationalities, including, of course, from Indonesia. And I just wanted to showcase the delicious Indonesian food that sometimes gets served when the Indonesian students come together on campus, right? So Warwick is where top Indonesian students come together. Um, and so uh, we really attract the best and brightest minds from Indonesia. Uh, a lot for, for example, uh, a lot of the students uh, who join us for the uh, master's degree, a lot of them would have graduated from top Indonesian universities like uh, Universitas Indonesia, Gajah Mada, uh, ITB, and, 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 you know, and, and uh, other top institutions. Warwick has been very engaged with um, the Indonesian uh, community and with Indonesia as a whole. Um, you might be interested to know, okay, I'm not sure how many of you can recognize the Indonesian man standing in the middle in this photo, uh, but that man is actually Andrea Hirata. Uh, and he is the author of the novel Laskar Pelangi. Uh, uh, he's, I, I'm, sure, I'm sure you know him actually, he's a very famous novelist. And we awarded him with an honorary uh, degree, uh, you know, for his uh, contributions to Indonesian literature. Another um, way that we got involved with, uh, you know, the Indonesian students uh, and Indonesian society in general is by organizing the Indonesian Scholars International Convention. Uh, this was held, uh, you know, back in 2017, uh, where we invited Indonesian students from all over the world to come to the Warwick campus and listen to speeches by Indonesian VIPs like the mayor of Surabaya, Ibu Tri Risma Harini, as well as other key leaders uh, like uh, Didit Maulana, who's a leading designer, as well as the CEO of GE Indonesia. So a lot, lots of VIPs. And then at the end of uh, the symposium, they were even treated to a concert by Toulouse, who is uh, one of my favorite Indonesian singers. 
And um, you know, so we 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 offer University of Warwick. We offer a really vibrant um, life and lifestyle on campus. And when students graduate, they can also look forward to an amazing career. Now, our alumni uh, from Indonesia who have gone back to Indonesia. Uh, find themselves employed by some of the top uh, and uh, the prestigious uh, organizations. For example, of course, Bank Indonesia. Bank in Indonesia actually sent quite a number of uh, PhD scholars uh, to the University of Warwick. Uh, Bank Mandiri also sent their scholars to University of Warwick. Um, and then of course, when they graduate, they, you know, they, they work uh, at, uh, at these banks. Um, JP Morgan, you will find uh, Warwick alumni. Geodis is a supply chain, uh, international supply chain company. Allen and Overy is a prestigious law firm. Chevron, of course, USAID um, in the NGO sector. And also we have a lot of um, professors and lecturers uh, uh, you know, who are alumni uh, of University of Warwick teaching in Universitas Indonesia. And so we, we help our students to achieve their career goals um, by uh, making sure that um, they are well supported in their uh, hunt for a career after they graduate. So there's like a, you know, a special website for them to log in, uh, develop themselves, uh, arrange for uh, coaching, for example, CV writing coaching, uh, interviews coaching, uh, as well as, um, you know, uh, giving them lots of um, uh, uh, access to uh, the different uh, placements, internships uh, that are available in the UK and jobs, of course, job, job opportunities in the UK. And, and something I'd like you uh, to uh, all know is that one of the wonderful things that have happened last year is that the UK government, they have changed the immigration laws such that now, if you graduate from a UK university, you can actually stay on in the UK for two years to gain working experience, to work in UK companies, right? So that therefore it has become, it will become much easier for international students to look for a job after they graduate. Now, a lot of you will ask, okay, so, you know, if I'm interested in the University of Warwick, uh, what are the entry requirements? Now for postgraduate courses, we are looking for a bachelor's degree from an Indonesian university with a minimum of GPA of 3.0, but some of the more competitive courses, we will ask for a GPA of 3.3 with a minimum IELTS score of 6.5. But again, for some of the courses uh, where it's a bit more competitive, we do ask for uh, an IELTS score of 7.0, right? So how do you apply? How, you know, for those of you who are interested to apply, uh, you, you know, I always get questions from Indonesian students. How do I get the LOA? How to get the LOA? That seems to be uh, one of the most common questions from Indonesian students. Um, and the answer is simply make an online application through the University of Warwick website. And then we will assess your application. And then if you are successful, we will give you a conditional offer. Or if you have met all the conditions, we'll give you an unconditional offer. Now, what you need to prepare would be your degree certificate and transcript, your personal statement, the name and email addresses of two references, and your IELTS results. But if your IELTS results are not ready yet, you can submit them later, right? So if you don't have your IELTS result, you can just submit the other documents first. Later, when you get your IELTS result, you can submit them later, right? Application fee is 60 pounds and the application deadline for the 21-22 entry is 31st of July, 2021. For PhD students, um, uh, you will need to find, uh, you have a different, um, uh, there is a different process for you to apply for uh, a PhD. Uh, and so uh, for PhD students, you actually need to find a suitable supervisor first. Uh, you need to go through our website, uh, look for a suitable supervisor who is doing work that is similar to your area of interest and drop an email. Uh, attaching your research proposal, right? So that um, 
the uh, professor can read your research proposal and decide whether or not uh, they are interested to have you as a PhD student, right? Now, let's say the, P the professor agrees and you know, likes your research proposal and wants to have you as the PhD student, then you will make a formal application to the university. And for PhD students, there is no application fee, right? So there's no application fee if you are applying to do a PhD. Funding. Right. Another popular question I get will be what are the scholarships that are available? Now, the University of Warwick, we offer the Chancellor's International Scholarship. Um, so 25 scholarships for the most outstanding PhD applicants um, in any discipline. So it is a very fierce competition that you will face if you apply for this Warwick Chancellor's uh, scholarship. Uh, full funding will be provided for the three and a half years. And in order to apply, you will need to secure your research supervisor first. Right? So it's a similar process. You must have a supervisor from the University of Warwick. And then you must submit an application for the scholarship after you have a supervisor. Right? So applications for this Chancellor's International Scholarship uh, opens in on 1st of August and the deadline is 18th of January. There are also departmental scholarships, um, including uh, scholarships from the Warwick Business School, from WMG, Law and Politics and International Studies, for example. So uh, what you need to do is you need to visit the department that you're interested in, the, 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 the academic department that you're interested in, to see if they are offering any partial scholarships. Now, these partial scholarships will be usually between 20 to 50% discount on tuition fees. And that's the website that you can go to to check out what are all the different scholarships available. And the website will have the latest information with the latest details. Now, I'd also like to highlight that Warwick works closely with the Shivening Organization for the Shivening Scholarships, right? So the Shivening Scholarship is a UK government scholarship for outstanding scholars with leadership potential. Um, there are ab about uh, 70 scholarships. Well, it depends on year to year, depending on the budget. So this was for like previous years. I'm not sure what the budget will be like for next year. Uh, one year is a... Uh, for a one-year taught master's degree. So only applicable for master's students. Now, what are the requirements for the Shivling Scholarship? You need to be an Indonesian citizen and you must return to Indonesia after your completing your degree, right? Um, of course, you must meet the academic requirements of the universities you have applied to. Uh, and you must have a minimum IELTS score of 6.5. Uh, and minimum of two years working experience at the point of application. Now, the Shivering Works uh, organization works together with uh, the University of Warwick, and we actually um, uh, work together to fund these uh, Shivering Warwick scholarships. Um, now, in order to apply for the Shivering Warwick scholarship, uh, you just need to make Warwick as your first choice. So you just apply for the Shivening Scholarship as per normal, but just then when you select uh, your choices of uh, the university uh, courses that you want, a Warwick degree uh, course must be your first choice. And then you can be considered for the Shivening Warwick Scholarship. Shivening also works with one of our, our academic departments, WMG, and then there's a special Shivening WMG scholarship for all these different courses that you see on the slide, right? So some of the very popular courses with Indonesian students uh, include uh, MSCE Business Management on the top, uh, right at the top of the second column, uh, e-business management, as well as MSc Innovation and Entrepreneurship. These are uh, two of the like most popular courses with Indonesian students. But um, uh, the, 
all the other courses are just, you know, just as equally interesting. So, for example, um, MSc Cybersecurity and Management is very good in terms of um, having good potential for employability, right? Uh, for you to get employment uh, after you graduate because cybersecurity is becoming a very important part uh, of the digital landscape uh, moving forward. In summary, uh, Warwick offers academic excellence um, with our great uh, reputation all over the world. We provide a wonderful student experience through facilities, support networks, and a close-knit campus community. So, th like I said, that's uh, and I like I said, I think you know I can't stress this enough. This is so important uh, 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 for for me in terms of you know when I talk about the university because. Our at our university, you won't feel alone, you won't feel uh, anonymous because some of the universities, they're really huge. You can feel a little bit lost sometimes because you know these are such huge universities. But Warwick is a middle-sized university and, um, and so there's still a, a strong sense of community and like a close-knit family feeling on campus. And then of course, we offer excellent career prospects for our graduates. And finally, the last slide uh, before I open uh, my presentation up to questions and answers. Uh, that's um, a photo of me, as you can see. Um, and that's my email address with my WhatsApp number. Uh, right. By the way, don't be fooled. The background, the beach is not at Warwick. I was actually on holiday uh, uh, in Pulau Tioman in Malaysia. So uh, uh, that don't expect to come to Coventry expecting to see the sea. All right. So um, yeah. So uh, anyway, so yeah, there's just a quick of me on holiday. Um, right, and so if you have any questions, uh, if you want to get in touch, if you just want to find out a little bit more, or if you're having any trouble with your application, please feel free to get in touch with me uh, and I will be most happy to assist you. All right, so I have come to the end of my presentation. So I will, I guess we will now open the floor up to yes. Q&A. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Imran, for your presentation. Now we will begin the Q&A session. I will read the questions that already asked by the viewer in the YouTube comment section. So uh, we will have the first question. Someone asked about the application fee. Is there any application fee to Warwick University to apply to the Warwick University? Yes, there is an application fee, and the application fee uh, uh, is uh, uh, 60, uh, 60 pounds for the online application fee, right? So if you're a, a postgraduate student and you're applying online, you will have to pay uh, 60 pounds for the application fee. Is there any waiver for the application fee? Yes, yes. In some cases, we will allow for a waiver of application fees, especially if you uh, have applied for a scholarship, then it is possible to waive the application fee. But that is something that uh, you will need to uh, uh, indicate when you are applying online. Okay, thank you for the answer. I'm going to... The second question, someone asked for someone that graduated but with but don't have first or second class honor degree, but have a great uh, professional background. Is it possible to uh, to get admitted to the Warwick University? Right. Okay. So I just want to clarify because um, you know officially on our prospectus we will say that we are looking for uh, someone with an honors degree uh, from, you know, uh, uh, so because in the UK, you know, you have the honors degree, so maybe may first class, second upper, second lower, et cetera. Now for the Indonesian equivalent, because I know in Indonesian uh, universities, you know, you don't have the same system. And so what we are looking at is your GPA from your university. So in terms of GPA that we want, that we are looking for, it will be 3.0 uh, 
or 3.3, depending on your university, right? And so uh, um, uh, when I say depending on your university, it's also because, you know, in, in Indonesia, uh, you know, there is accreditation A university and accreditation B university. And so for uh, uh, accreditation A, there is a different GPA cut off. Accreditation B, there is a different GPA cut off. Right, um, and so if you want more information for the course that you're interested in, or you know what is the GPA cut off, please feel free to get in touch with me, and I will be able to advise you because different courses have different cut off points as well. Right, so with your Indonesian degree, if you have an Indonesian degree from an Indonesian university, accreditation A or B, you will be able to apply to the University of Warwick. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we have a uh quite specific question over here. Someone asked, I'd like to know why is the innovation and entrepreneurship course owned by the WMG and not the WBS? What are the key differentiators of this course to other campuses in the UK? Right, okay. So, very good question. Um, now, let me tell you a little bit more about WMG to, 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 to better explain. Now, WMG started out uh, many, many years ago as the Warwick Manufacturing Group. Now, and the Warwick Manufacturing Group, uh, that was the old name, um, uh, so, you know, which later became WMG. So the Warwick Manufacturing Group, they specialized in training people from an industry background and from a scientific background and from a technical background to give them the management uh, uh, the, the management skills and the soft skills that these people with scientific and technical background that they need to go into senior management, right? So for example, you might have an engineer who wants to become uh, maybe like uh, do more marketing, for example, or maybe you might have um, uh, a, a researcher, like a, you know, a scientific researcher who wants uh, 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 to move into uh, 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 human resource management, for example. Um, uh, so, so basically, WMG was there to help all these people with a more technical background uh, and to orient them with more soft skills to allow them to become leaders of industry after they graduate. Um, and so that is why um, uh, that, that gives you the explanation of why uh, in Warwick, we actually have two different management schools. One is WBS, Warwick Business School. Another one is WMG. So WBS, traditionally, they have pulled from, you know, the, uh, you know, uh, uh, financial institutions, uh, accounting and all that. So uh, more, um, uh, more of the, uh, you know, uh, financial banking sector, whereas WMG has been more involved in the industry sector, for example, the car makers, for example, uh, you know, uh, uh, fast moving consumer goods, for example, or, you know, uh, 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 the uh, people from uh, an, uh, production and factory background, right? Um, and so, and so th those are the, the, the differences uh, uh, between WBS and WMG. Now, for innovation and entrepreneurship, um, WMG, how they are able to help you is that when you apply for the course, WMG already wants to know what is your innovation? What is this business idea that you have? And when you, uh, you know, tell us about your business idea and what your plans are, when you come to the WMG Innovation and Entrepreneurship course, we will help you to sort of develop your business idea and hopefully work on it so that by the time you graduate, maybe your, your business idea will be able and ready to be launched, to be put out into the market, right? And so WMG, the innovation and entrepreneurship process uh, is very hands-on, a lot of advice, not just from our faculty, but also from industry leaders. Uh, and um, and uh, there's also some connection, you know, uh, with, for example, um, um, uh, uh, you know, venture capitalists and all that. Uh, and so there are some opportunities out there to help you launch your, your, your business idea after you graduate. Thank you very much for your answer. I think that's really clear. Uh, we will go to the third question. Uh, okay. Hi, Imran. As I am interested to pursue masters in relation to aviation industry. This 
despite current challenges? Do you have any advice what postgraduate course that might cover this in Warwick? Thank you. So which industry was that? Aviation industry. Okay, aviation industry. So for example, um, for aviation industry, so uh, now if you are somebody who comes from a more technical background, for example, um, you know, a more scientific or engineering background, we have this uh, course called engineering business management engineering business management right and so definitely if you're in the pros if you're in the in the in the, in, the, in the field of you know producing aeroplanes you know manufacturing aeroplanes or, or, or related uh, you know uh, related services definitely a course like the engineering MSc engineering business management will be very useful to you um, I would suggest that you get in touch with me so that I can uh, give you a more detailed explanation about you know what are the kinds of modules that you'll be able to learn under the this course. Thank you very much. Uh, someone asked about the LOA as like current condition is unpredictable. How long is the validity of the LOA from the University of Warwick? All right. Okay. So the LOA is always for the next year. So for example, if you're applying now, the, uh, the LOA will be valid uh, for you to enter the university in 2021. However, in some departments, if you cannot come in 2021, they might be flexible and they may offer you uh, to defer your studies for one year. That is possible, but you need to make a request and it needs to be approved. It's not automatically approved, right? So there's no guarantee, but it is possible to request and some departments definitely do give deferments. Okay, thank you very much. Uh... As you already explained about the scholarship for the postgraduate and uh, from Chavening, someone asked about a scholarship for the undergraduate program. Is there any scholarship for the undergraduate program? Yes, definitely. Uh, we do have scholarships for undergraduate programs. That's a great question. In fact, um, we now have two very uh, important scholarships for undergraduates. One is the Yayasan Al-Bukhari uh, Scholarship or Al-Bukhari Foundation Scholarship, that will give you £20,000 uh, discount on tuition fees over three years, right? So that is one program, uh, but it's limited to some departments like Department of Engineering and Warwick Business School, right? So there, there are only certain departments uh, that, uh, that you can use that scholarship for. But if you're you know, looking at another department, there is another recently launched um, scholarship called the Warwick Undergraduate Excellence Scholarship. Warwick Undergraduate Excellence Scholarship. And that includes a number of scholarships that are full tuition fee scholarships. So that means you don't have to pay any tuition fees for the three years that you are studying as an undergraduate, right? So apart, and then there are other, because there are three tiers, uh, one is a full scholarship, and then uh, there are another two partial scholarships uh, that are also available under this uh, scholarship uh, award. Um, um, yeah, and so uh, again, if you are interested uh, in these uh, undergraduate scholarships, please feel free to get in touch with me and I will be sharing with you the link for these scholarships. I am available in my uh, in the Warwick chat room in our virtual booth. So do come and visit me at my booth. Okay, thank you very much. And um, that will be the last question for the Q&A session. I have to say that I have several uh, compliments for you that your presentation is really clear and easy to understand. Okay, so... Wonderful, thank you so much. Okay, uh, that is the end of our Q&A session. And just a reminder, you can connect with Mr. Imran through the information given. And um, we also like to remind you that today is the last day of Rehab Indonesia event. Do not miss out the chance to talk directly to the university representative through our virtual fair. You can access it through our website, event.ehav.id. I think like if you want to talk more to the representative from University of Warwick, you can meet Mr. Imran through the 
website. Okay, thank you very much for Mr. Imran for the presentation. See you in our next session and good evening, okay. everyone. Thank you, thank very, you much. very much, everyone, for listening. Take care and bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye.